Ja, okay. Passt. Garage. I'm reading this letter, direct, uh, question, directly from your autumn letter to us. What are you going to do about his question? It's tomorrow. Is that for tomorrow? Okay. Fine. And um, the question was from an authoress who wrote to you mm -hmm. and um, which circulated... Oh, yes, Mario, yes. yes Mario Strauss. Mm -hmm. The question is, your teaching seems a lot on balance and refining rather than redistributing energy. Would you comment on this in relation to our sexual natures? Most gurus we know either teach of repression or transmutation of sex, uh, i.e. Muktananda, Satchitananda, Yogananda, for example, or like Rajneesh, suggest that we abandon the golden mean for untrammeled free expression in whatever our desires lead to, in order to work out those desires. And hmm. um, you commented after that that you would like to explode for once and for all. Did Strange I? ideas perpetrated on the Western public. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, all those names mentioned, who are those guys? <laughs> Do they really know what they're talking about? The questioner asks about our sexual natures. Has anyone really got a sexual nature? I think everyone has a divine nature. Hmm? For is sex not also divine? Hmm? That whichever has been created by divinity hmm? as a natural instinct in man must be divine. There must have been some necessity for that. Hmm? Hmm? Some teachers speak of sublimating sexual energies. Now there is only one energy. Hmm? But man, in order to define things, compartmentalizes it and call one thing a mental energy, another thing a physical energy, another thing a sexual energy. Hmm? But, of course, what they are really talking about is the drive one has in oneself. Hmm? And there are so many kinds of drives. Hmm? The drive of love, something that urges you on. Hmm? The drive of hatred, something that makes you hate. Hmm? And something that wants you to copulate. Hmm? And it is said that that is one of the most powerful instincts in man, the desire to copulate. Fine. Now, when some of these teachers talk of sublimating the sexual energy, what do they mean by sublimation? This is a fallacy. It is just not possible. They delude themselves in thinking that I am sublimating the sexual energy and the Sanskrit term is orgis, light, light, hmm? a spiritual force. They sublimate a physical force into a spiritual force. That is a fallacy for the very physical force is a spiritual force in itself. Hmm? There is none other than that. So therefore it is a, fa a fallacy and it is a fallacy when they say they could sublimate that energy. What they are doing is causing untold repressions and emotional troubles. I have gone through various ashrams where certain brahmacharis as they are called are put through these practices and they use all kinds of means including blocks of ice hmm? <laughs> and with these severe austerities and practices of these austerities can only lead to repressions hmm? 
inhibitions. Hmm? It's okay for an impotent man. Fine. So, what is the answer? What is the answer? Good. Now, by trying to sublimate, or trying to push away, or trying to control that desire, you are disturbing certain patterns already set in your mind. Because man is born with those patterns. And of course the primary aim, as some religions would say, is purely for procreation and not pleasure. That too is an extreme. It should be a combination of both. But if we come to look at it, does man really know how to indulge? in copulation. No. There are very few people that know how to make love. Hmm? Very few people. They know how to have release, the physical animal release, but making love is something far different. In the true love making, hmm? the entirety of the animal the mental and the God-man comes into play. In other words, the physical, mental and the spiritual would come into such an integration, would be so integrated that during that time the woman is not there, the man is not there, and only love or pure joy remains. And that is the totality of lovemaking. For it also aids procreation and it is also joyful. It is a meditation. It is a meditation. So, to come back, when they say you try and sublimate or control sex and energies, the repressions that are formed would naturally have mental repressions and therefore it has to express itself in some way or the other. It could express itself in the man becoming more violent the man could become more violent, the man could become, find some kind of insanity within him because the very act of repression must produce an imbalance in the man's mind for he is curbing that which should not be curbed. So inhibition is wrong trying to control it is wrong mm -hmm. and yet some form of discipline and control is absolutely necessary. How does one do that? That is the question. Mm -hmm. All forms of control, not only in the sex act, but any action in life should be spontaneous. It should be totally spontaneous. How does one acquire the spontaneity? Hmm? It is by understanding. Therefore, you'd find that those that are involved in meditation and have practiced assiduously and properly, and with that integration, all the actions become spontaneous, including the sex act. So, in that very spontaneity, there is an inbuilt control hmm? whereby one does not indulge in excesses, but within the limitations of one's capacity. Hmm? Now, you find 
various kinds of sexual problems hmm, where proper functioning is impeded. Hmm. They could be of physical origin, but mostly of a mental origin. Hmm. Physical origin. Hmm. The very thought processes, the very conflicts that these so-called gurus hmm, instill in people's minds, and many of our well-known the religions do that too, hmm? and it produces such a fear. Hmm? I've known of women coming to me who are totally frigid. And when you study, um, go back into the histories, you'd invariably find that certain thoughts have been planted into their minds by parents and by churches that this is a sin. And because of that idea, so deeply planted in the mind, that when the person grows up, hmm, he either becomes a non-functional being, or functioning within great limitations, hmm, such as impotence and frigidity. So, it is again all the mat all matter of the mind. And this damage has been done by these people that try to impose something totally unnatural hmm, on susceptible minds. The best thing one could ever achieve in life is to be one's self. Hmm? And when you are your self, there is an automatic discipline upon you. Hmm? Now, when an automatic discipline is there, then you are definitely natural. You will not go beyond moral boundaries. When they say that the person must be faithful, faithful to your wife, faithful to your husband, Hmm? That has nothing, that injunction has nothing to do with the sex act. It is only interpreted in the meaning of the sex act. What is really required there and the basis of this injunction is that one-pointedness. Hmm? Where all your energies are concentrated on one person in love and devotion. <coughs> but then you have totally integrated people who become a law unto themselves. And those are very rare people. But we are talking of the common person. Not the man in the street. What should he do? Now, if a man is unfaithful to his wife, what makes him unfaithful? It is not the surging and urging powers of sex. No, that does not make him unfaithful. Hmm? What makes him unfaithful is his search for something. When there is a lack of communication from heart to heart, not body to body, that falls in place. When there is a lack of communication from heart to heart, he searches to find that heart with which his heart can become one. And that is the reason of all the infidelities in the world. All infidelities are based upon search. They are trying to communicate and through that search, what they are really trying to do, unconsciously, subconsciously, is to find divinity. Hmm? A divinity through the concrete to the abstract. Hmm? 
So therefore, when um, a woman was brought to Jesus, mm -hmm. some men got her there and accused her mm -hmm. of adultery. He berated those men more. He said, what right have you to put this woman to shame? Mm -hmm. And to the woman, he just said, be on your way, sin no more. Hmm? Sin no more, what does that mean? Have your mind concentrated, because he did not teach Tratak. Yeah. <laughs> but now, but now, the lack is this. Although the basis is search, are they really searching in the right way? E, are they conscious of the search? No. So there lies the difference. To search unconsciously and to search consciously are two different worlds. Hmm? So the Zen, it degrades itself into the animal side of man. And yet, the search within himself is always for love. To love and be loved. So, within searching in the wrong direction, that love has become fragmented. For there is no man or woman in this world that cannot love his or her spouse. No. There could be other household in incompatibilities, mental, physical, whatever, but that could all be overcome. Now, I'm not talking of morality. I'm not talking of morality. These are man-made laws. Here in the West, we believe that man should have one wife. The Mohammedan people, their religion allows them to have four wives. Hmm? There were times in the history of the world where polygamy was recognized and so was polyandry. Why must it always be on the man's side? Hmm? Yeah, what about the woman? Why not? Hmm? So polygamy and polyandry was allowed in certain times and that of course in our times and in our society we regard to be immoral. So, morality is based upon time place and circumstance. But the truth one has to find is purity. And purity is guided always by motivation. What is the motive in the act? Hmm? Now, a truly integrated man or women through spiritual practices that has brought about an equilibrium between mind, body and spirit, his actions will always be towards the good. For when he finds that divinity within himself, that integration within himself, then he will find that divinity in his wife. Or the wife will find the divinity in the husband. They will find that oneness between them where every moment of the day, without making love, they're experiencing a very subtle orgasm. Hmm? For the very bliss of divinity is like an orgasm itself. Hmm? The greatest joy or being lost hmm? that one knows in this world is in sex. So how can it be condemned? Hmm? In that period of orgasm, you are lost. Hmm? Your entire nervous system finds a stimulus and a regeneration. It is something very pure, something very holy. Hmm? So, 
How can you sublimate to holiness that which is already holy? Hmm? You see the mental attitude or the understanding one must have and having gained this understanding control becomes automatic and then why must man's sex urge be controlled hmm? he is going against his own nature he is going going against his own makeup hmm? for Sex is the greatest motivating factor. Sex and love, they are the strongest, as any psychologist will tell you, they are the strongest motivating factors in life. Hmm? Great kingdoms have been conquered. Hmm? Great things have been done. All the greatest things in the world have been done because of the sexual urge interpreted through love. So that which is apparently ugly hmm, has as its basis beauty for nothing else exists in this universe but beauty. Hmm? It is man's fragmentation that makes him see ugliness or evil in anything. For everything is good. Everything that is manifested from goodness must be good. Hmm? So now, to repeat what I said, uh, that how can you lead, how can you sublimate holiness to holiness? Holiness is holiness. Hmm? And everything is good and holy. Right. So it is these teachers that has been mentioned in the question, and they tell you that by controlling the energies, the seminal fluids can be transmuted into light, into spiritual energy. Hmm? That is a fallacy to repeat again, because that very seminal fluid is also spiritual energy. Hmm? the very act of touching, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, those are all spiritual energies because without the spiritual basis of those energies, hmm, nothing can function. Hmm? Spiritual energy. So, by controlling, you are repressing. Hmm? And repressions and inhibitions can lead, it must have its organic expression. And that is why we have so many psychosomatic diseases as well as organic diseases. So it is not a matter of control. It's not a matter of willful control. In any case, the idea of controlling the seminal fluid is wrong. Hmm? So it is not an idea of control but an idea of understanding. Hmm? So that is where this Yoganand and the other nuns and anans really f fall flat. Hmm. Discipline? Yes. But discipline must be brought about by understanding. You tell, you tell a person, do not do this. And the more the person mulls around in his mind that idea that I must not eat sweets, hmm? the more would he start craving for sweets. So what I am telling you here now is a great truth that love must flow. It is the nature of love not to be stagnant. Love can never remain stagnant. Love must flow in whichever way with your wife. Hmm? Love must flow. And if you pre-plan the whole day through, then if you have too much animal in you, you'll do what you want to do. But that is animalism. Hmm? It is not the love of a man-god. Hmm? 
which you really are. I mean, when I say man, I mean woman as well. Who works both ways. That's the way lawyers, you know, do their contracts. In the prologue, they say, where man is mentioned, it means, well, I don't know the legal terminology. But, so, love must flow, and that very flow, if given scope, by some form of integration within yourself, becomes spontaneous, and is automatically controlled according to your capacity, there is no waste. Hmm? There is no waste. For even in love, there is a principle of economics. Did you know that? Even in that very flow, there is a principle of economics. And here it means there is a system, hmm? an unsystem unsystematized system. In other words, it forms a pattern, and all patterns have a system. It's like a poem, so free and yet confined in its very meter, and yet enjoying all the freedom. That is what this sex act has to be all about. So, the question of sublimation does not remain anymore. Hmm? For it is already sublime, and if it is used as a natural flow of love in that union, why does a man or a woman want to be very close to each other? Hmm? Uh, you might have heard this and you might have said this, Beloved, I love you so much I could eat you up. Hmm? Have you right within me? What does it really mean? It's not an expression of lust. Hmm? It is the intense longing and desire for union, unification of the spirit. And when that unification occurs between man and woman, remember, you have tasted of the essence of the divine. Huh? It has to be a natural flow where there is no intention. It's a happening, as I said. It's a celebration. Hmm? For everything celebrates. Hmm? For the birds and the bees, they celebrate. Hmm? And like the bee gathering from flower to flower hmm, to produce honey, so we gather all the fragmentations within our minds and selves to produce that honey of love. Hmm? You see, so let's recap a bit. That love can never remain stagnant. It has to flow. Hmm? Inhibiting sexual energies or trying to inhibiting sexual energies can only lead to mental repressions. Hmm? Trying to sublimate sexual energies is a fallacy because sexual energies are divine too. They are sublime. So how can you take the sublime to the sublime? It is there already. Hmm? So what do we have to find? We have to find naturalness by personal integration. And that is brought about by spiritual practices. And having this personal integration, then your demands of yourself or the environment are or of anything and anyone would be self-controlled because integration brings about the awareness and the understanding. Hmm? So then the sex act becomes one of the most beautiful experiences man can ever have short of the unity consciousness of a saint. Clear? Hmm? Okay, fine. Now, 
study juvenile delinquency, for example. Hmm? How is that brought about? There are many sociological factors, hmm? like home environment, education, parents, hmm? systems of education. Hmm? There are many factors. But one of the most important factors why a child becomes a delinquent is because he is searching. Hmm? He is searching for something that is lacking in his life. Hmm? And he tries to find it in drugs and all kinds of other abuses. Hmm? And that is a sure sign of the status of today's world a status of fragmentation. The child, in all the things he does, is looking for fulfillment. Hmm? If I had my way, I would like to introduce spiritual practices right from kindergarten level, hmm? so the children could grow up more integrated. Hmm? not at university level, then the minds are fixed already on certain things. Patterns, grooves are made, and it's more difficult to erase those grooves and put in new grooves. But from a child, standard one, sub A onwards, that will make the society a better society. Hmm? Now, hmm?